electric bikes come in all shapes and sizes, but have you ever heard of an e-bike the size of a laptop? I know, right, crazy stuff. We are here in Berlin, home of the, what's it called? Home of the Brandenburg Gate, the Berlin Wall, really good brat verse, and of course, the Lemo One electric bike to see how this bike can fit inside a backpack. Look at these babies. Let's go in the store. Hey, thank Welcome you. To so guys, coming. this is Tony. He is one of the partners at Lemo. And uh, you're giving us some lovely bikes today, aren't you? I mean, look at the design. I mean, they are beautiful, aren't they? These have been winning awards as well. For example, the Red Dot Best of the Best among others. Now, you're probably thinking, uh, Ailish, what are you on about? This doesn't fit in your backpack. Well, just wait one second, because this bike is made in two different stages. So you've got the frame itself, which is a completely analog ride. There are no electric components in it. But in here, there's the battery, there's also the controller. This holds everything that makes this bike electric. Now I'm gonna talk more about this. It's called the Smart Pack. But first I wanna give you a little rundown on what the Lemo One has to offer. The Lemo One comes with a carbon fiber fork and an aluminium frame featuring construction technology that ousts ugly welding for a smooth, continuous look. There's three different frames available. There's a step through, large, and extra large, catering for riders between 160 to 200 centimeters. Online, you build the Lemo One as you wish, with options between color, analog, and electric, and what type of drive that you prefer. Weight-wise, you're looking at 15 kg for the analog version, or 18 kilograms with the addition of the Smart Pack. If you choose the electric life, Duh, the 36 volt, 250 watt motor in line with European regulations gets you up to 15.5 miles per hour and delivers a max 40 newton meters of torque to give you a punchy stop start at the traffic lights. The rear hub has a patented dual mode to cater for both analog and electric riding. And should you need to lock it up, you'll be pleased to know that this bike comes with security features such as a hub lock and inbuilt GPS tracking. Hydraulic disc brakes, mud guards, and front and rear lights also come included. And wheel size is either 27.5 or 29 inches depending on which size of frame you need to go for. Today I'm going to be on the large frame because I'm 5 foot 10 so this fits me perfectly. Richard, what are you yeah. on? I'm on the step through. I don't know why because I'm taller than you. <laughs> but we'll, we'll switch between us. Yeah. Uh, I've also got the carbon belt drive single speed version so this is a bit more like some of the incredibly popular European European e-bikes that are coming to the market at the moment. And what we're going to do, we're going to go around Berlin aren't we? We are. We're going to take some photos, we're going to see some sights, and we're going to ride some bikes. Yes! Yeah, Berlin's the perfect place to go cycling. I think it's one of the best ways to see the city, isn't it? So, let's get out there. Lemo may be a fairly young Berlin-based micromobility startup, but they're here to transform city commutes. Teaming up with Amsterdam design house Springtime, they've nailed the form factor and created a beautiful looking bike that can grab attention, turn heads, and turn commuters to e-mobility. And that's their key goal, to get us moving in a way that is less pollutive and to do it in style. But you can only really achieve this by keeping costs down, and the team have been really mindful about this. R&D meant thinking the whole process of design, production, and assembly to reduce the overall cost and make their bike more affordable and more accessible to a wider group of riders, while still maintaining incredible quality. And here we are at our first stop of the day. We are at the German Historical Museum and what a fitting place to be to talk more about some futuristic German e-mobility tech. Now I'm talking about the Smart Pack right here. So this has all the electric components you need to make this bike electric. It's got the battery, it's got the controller, it's even got 4G networks, which means that you can get system updates over the air and also GPS tracking. So the battery itself is designed by Lemo. So they have sourced the most up-to-date cells, which means that you're getting the most power possible currently at this time. It has a 450 watt hour battery, which Lemo claim can do up to 100 kilometers on one charge. Now, if you do look at the small print, 
it does say on level one assist on flat terrain, but hey, this can do 100 kilometers. And of course, if you want to use it without the battery, it has unlimited range. So another really cool thing about the Smart Pack is the fact that you can take it off and you can use it as a power bank. It has USB-A and USB-C ports, so you can plug in your laptop, plug in your speaker, plug in your phone to charge it up. It's just a really smart design. It weighs only three kilograms, so it's really easy to put in your backpack. There you go. That's the title of the video, guys. The Smart Pack battery can be charged 800 times before its cycle life drops to 80% capacity. A new generation of Smart Pack communication network will be required after approximately five years of use. But you'll be pleased to hear in that time you can customize your Smart Pack with different color cover options. Now, old diminished batteries from Smart Pack can be downgraded and used for portable energy storage or even be recycled. Once you've bought the frame of the Lemo bike, you can either pay a monthly subscription or buy the Smart Pack out right meaning you can spend less at the beginning get to grips with it and once you're quite literally sold you can buy it saving money in the long run i love how lemo have approached their design it's just a really practical concept i mean the frame itself can last 10 plus years the battery in the smart pack of course will need replacing probably after about five years so having the two completely separate just makes so much sense even the frame itself although it is aluminium with a carbon front fork the aluminium itself it isn't polished so that means that in terms of being more environmentally friendly you're not getting dust particles of aluminium in the air which is actually just really bad for the people working on the bike so they've really taken that environmental impact really seriously and made just a beautiful design oh here's richard and his camera i think it's photo shoot time yeah so what we're going to do today is i'm going to take loads of photos of you with the bike yeah for our pages and for lemo but I also, I've wanted to come to Berlin for ages because the street photography is amazing, architecture is beautiful, and I want to take some more kind of minimal arty shots with you, probably with Megan as well, who's holding the camera right now. So we're going to go around, we're going to get to some of the most beautiful places in Berlin. Yeah. And hopefully we're going to get some good shots. Let's do it. Where do you want me? Uh... Next up, we're at the James Simon Gallery, and what a great place to talk a little bit more about the patented dual mode hub. So this is a very smart feature. So this will allow you to switch between electric mode and manual mode. Now I can hear you screaming, Ailish, why on earth would I go into manual when I've spent money on a smart pack? Well, if you should run out of range, then this gives you the ability to take off that resistance with the electric motor and it makes it a much more comfortable ride home. And also it gives you that flexibility. Say if you wanted to ride without the smart pack itself, then you're basically getting two bikes in one. It's very clever. Starting with level one assist, I was hitting a speed of around 18 kilometers per hour. With the relaxed cycling of my fellow Berliners, level one delivers a really nice level of assist that gives a background push to take the weight of the bike off of you. As I mentioned earlier, I'm on the chain drive version currently, so I can switch up my cadence as I like. It's really fun cycling around Berlin as well. It's a different experience. It just feels a lot more chill. Level two really steps the assist up and raises your speed to about 23.5 kilometers an hour. Just next to Richard here. I think he's in level two as well. Yeah, I'm in level two. <laughs> it's really comfortable in level two. Finally, I'm on to level three, the max assist available, and I'm barely putting the work in. I'm up at 25.5 kilometers an hour, taking over casual analog cyclists, and this is where electric really sings. Those bigger wheels mean that you've got lovely stability. It's making contact with that tarmac, so it's gripping really well. You've also got a really nice riding position with this, so it's not way down to the ground, that kind of sport mode. You've got about a sort of 60 degree angle, I would say. This semi-upright setup means you've got a nice combination of comfort and agility, whilst also having a good view of the road. You can even spec up with a suspension saddle, which we saw in the store earlier. So if you live in a particularly potholed area, then you can get that extra cushioning added. I mean, again, there's not much difference between the chain drive and the belt drive in terms of it being smoother they're both super smooth really lovely it's actually uh, when you get up to the top speed the resistance with the belt drive i would have a little bit more to be honest it really takes the weight of the bike off of you to the point where you're putting a little bit more weight in your seat 
Between the two, I think is a tough choice, but I think I would actually go for a gear drive, just because it gives you that flexibility should you want to change up the cadence with the higher and lower gears. Tony, who you met at the start of this video, explained the flexibility that Lamo offers is actually inspired by Berlin itself. Having spent a few days here, I can really see this as a city that is fun, freeing and so accommodating and that really is at the heart of Lemo. Lemo have done a fantastic job of creating a bit of a Van Moof cowboy contender. It's definitely more lightweight than Van Moof. I think cowboy is about the same weight. But what Lemo want to do is they want to promote the sort of going outdoors, getting out of the city, whereas Van Moof and cowboy, they're very much living in the city, urban commuting. Lemo are trying to push you out of that to go further. Whether you're riding off for the weekend or nipping over to work, it's important to prioritize a greener way of travel. Electric bikes like the Lemo One have the capacity to do so much good. Incorporated in the right way with good cycle infrastructure to instill confidence and monetary incentives like cycle to work schemes, whole cities can thrive. It's already there for the taking. We just need to shift those attitudes for car-centric commuters. Well, I think it's safe to say, whether you go for the step through or the standard frame or the the geared or the single speed chain or belt drive whatever you go for lemo provides such an awesome ride it's been so incredible to travel around berlin today testing out these bikes they're just a small little startup from berlin but they are bringing some big contenders to the e-bike market the key thing here with lemo is the fact that they just want to be able to offer an alternative something that is a bit more affordable that is really really well built and designed and it comes from the heart and you can really feel that when you ride these bikes i'm hoping you can hear me over the trains right now we are literally by the railway safe to say i'm a big fan i'm genuinely sold and if you're ever in berlin hit up these guys take it out for a test ride make sure to check out their website lemofuture.com you can find out all the information all right guys that's it for me today i hope you've enjoyed a little tour around Berlin with us lot. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the bikes. Which one would you go for? Would you go for chain? Would you go for belt drive? I'd love to hear your thoughts. And um, I'll see you in the next country. Bye.